of every village, every city soaring tower. Empty people live in darkness, every minute, every hour. Hear the cry of desperation from a billion broken hearts. With a need so great, where do we even start? Let it start with me. For everyone, I don't wanna miss my mission in the plan that you've begun. You have promised to go with me to the edges of it all and change everything that keeps me from your call. Let it start with me. Open up my eyes, fill my heart with your compassion. And good evening, let it start with us. Good evening, it's good to be here with you tonight. It's been a long day and one of those, but it is wonderful to be able to plug in and be with all of you this evening. Teresa, you're the first one up there this evening. <coughs> Excuse me, voice is a little raspy, but good evening, Miss Teresa. I'll wave back at you. All right. Miss Cynthia, Ryan, it's good to have you on this evening. God bless you. Miss Terry's there asking us to pray for a sister. Get her sister back on your prayer list. She has two more of those bladder tumors. They'll remove them on Tuesday. So please, please be in prayer for her. Miss Donna, good evening to you as well. Miss Sue, God bless you. It's good to have you there. Miss Sherry, my lovely wife says, Lord, please let it start with me, with all our dear brothers and sisters too. Use us to reach the world, you... Uh, you... Uh, you placed us. Uh, you placed us in. All right, Miss Cherry, I love you. Uh, also, thank you all much for praying for Michaela. Uh, we had uh, lots of scares going on for uh, a few days, and they're not over yet because she's not completely out of the woods yet. But uh, she is home from the hospital, and she has been able to hold things down. Uh, and that's what we want. We want her to be little by little to be able to hold food in, uh, literally, because the morning sickness, she wasn't able to hold anything in. I mean, literally, she was voiding her system, so nothing was going through at all. So for about two weeks, she'd been starving herself. And, of course, the baby's going to take the nutrients the babies need, which weakens her body even more. But uh, uh, 
Uh, they got her to hold some stuff down last night. She came home yesterday, and she's eaten a little bit yet last night and today, and she's been able to hold it all down. Uh, still a little irpy, but, you know, so far nothing is coming up. Keep her, please, 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 in your prayer. Uh, let's see. Uh, Janins, Jensen's are here. Frozen screen. You mean you got me frozen? Am I like that? Hopefully your screen won't stay frozen but then it'll keep on going. Sometimes that's going to happen because uh, this time of night becomes a pretty heavy uh, traffic volume out there, and depending on the speed coming in, uh, it can do that to you. Uh, Sherry says, very little things, yes, and pray, 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 pray. At any rate, it's good to be here uh, with you all this evening. We want to take the time that we have to uh, uh, look a little bit at missions, uh, talk a bit about missions, uh, talk about our Bible study and to pray together. So any prayer requests you got up there, throw them up there. Remember to uh, give gratitude to God because Rick and Linda's daughter doing better. She's all been doing better, and we're 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 certainly glad of that. Uh, we're going to put this in the bulletin, but I'll share it all with you. Uh, pray for Julia Campion, uh, uh, Buddy. Uh, uh, his funeral or his memorial will be December 16th, that's a Saturday, in at First Baptist Church, Bastrop, Louisiana. All right, so uh, we'll get all the information out. It'll be in the bulletin. I gave that to Jessica, which I can say, hey, hi, Miss Jessica. Big kiss, big kiss to that little Sadie, if you will. Good to see you this evening. Terry says, praise the Lord. I will agree with that. I will agree, and I think that praise his Lord is because Michaela's doing better too. So, But at any rate, uh, you can put that on your calendar uh, to pray for Julia. Those of you that know Buddy, uh, you can know that it's coming up, and uh, I will be going down for that. I've asked Rick uh, to cover for me for that Sunday, and uh, I will be going down because I won't be able to get back in time for Sunday service. So uh, Rick will be covering the Sunday service for me. I'll probably get back sometime that Monday or late that Sunday night, but uh, uh, please be in prayer. Uh, I'm going to go down. I'm going to be doing the service uh, uh, down there, so please, please uh, uh, pray for me uh, and uh, that journey, but pray for Julia as everything and the family because they're all going to be gathering together uh, where Buddy grew up in Monroe, Louisiana, or Bastrop, which is a suburb of Monroe. All right, I want you to take a look as we get ready and, and launch in here and jump in with both feet. Uh, we started two weeks ago. I took last week out to talk to you about uh, Israel because of everything that erupted there and is still going on. In fact, uh, things are heating up. Uh, we need to pray fervently, earnestly for that area. Uh, I can tell you that uh, with all the studies that we have done looking toward the time of Christ's return, when you see something like this, uh, you have to wonder, could this be it? I was with Jolene today. Please pray for her and the care she is doing for her mother. Yeah, she's trying to recuperate from having lost a kidney and taking care of her mother at the same thing. Thank you, Donna, for that update. I appreciate it. Uh, keep praying for Bill, too, because he's still recuperating from his broken uh, ankle. All right? But at any rate, uh, uh, what is going on over there? Everybody... Uh, is beginning to to line up. You have uh, Iran over there saying that uh, they're going to do a preemptive strike. You've got Russia saying they're going to blast our missiles out of the air. You've got a uh, uh, aircraft carrier, the support group that we've sent to the Med, uh, just setting off uh, the shore uh, to give aid and support. You've got uh, a, a lot. A, 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 Islamic Jihad and Hamas and uh, Hezbollah all teaming up together. You got Jordan uh, rattling their sword, and I believe, uh, I think it was Jordan that we closed our embassy there today. So, uh, you know, things are uh, heating up. Uh, I don't want to say that uh, this is it, because, uh, of course, Scripture says that uh, uh, we're not going to know the time. Certainly look at the season. And we can certainly say this is a possibility. 
So be in prayer. This could erupt in, in so many different areas and in so many different ways. Uh, so we just need to be praying. Uh, we know that uh, we know how the story all ends. We've been reading the end of the story. Uh, it's I think it's apropos that we're going to continue looking at four reasons why Isaiah twenty six nineteen through twenty one refer to the rapture tonight. Uh, but we will get back into that uh, to let you know. I was out looking at some stuff uh, today and uh, looked at some aerial uh, photos and. Uh, of the blast that that uh, that took out that hospital in Gaza, and uh, there's phone recordings out there. Uh, I think there's enough evidence uh, to prove that it was not Israel that struck the uh, uh, the hospital, but an errant missile launched at a, from a cemetery just behind the hospital by the Islamic Jihad. So. Uh, you know, but that doesn't mean that you can sell that to the Arab world, uh, who has lined up and said uh, those nasty Jews they did this to a hospital. The truth of the matter is, I doubt very seriously they did. And by the looks of the footage that uh, I've seen and that you can go out and look, I think you'd come to the same conclusion. I am deeply concerned about uh, the uh, rising anti-sentiment, uh, anti-Jewish sentiment that is beginning to flow through our own country, even from people that are in elected offices and make decisions. Uh, it's interesting to me that uh, the Capitol was overtaken by uh, uh, protests, protesters who swarmed the rotunda and all of that, and. Uh, uh, today or, or yesterday in defense of Palestine and all you know, all of that. Uh, we have college campuses, all of that, where there's a rampant anti-Israel sentiment uh, that is all these campuses and flooding across America. We need to pray. These are transformative and critical, critical times. Uh, Bakayla has an OB appointment, Sherry says, uh, Friday that will give us uh, more information. Uh, she is still too weak to be up and around. Uh, moves to, uh, it, 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 when she gets up, uh, nausea overtakes her too quickly, uh, but she hasn't thrown up yet, and we are grateful for that. All right, with all that being said, and with that as background, uh, let's take a look at Isaiah 26, verses 19 through 21. Where Isaiah says, your dead will live and their corpses will rise. You will lie in the dust and awaken and shout for joy. For your dew is as the dew of the dawn and the earth will give birth uh, to the departed spirit. Come, uh, uh, my people, into your rooms and close your door behind you. Hide for a little while until indignation runs its course. For behold, the Lord is about to come out from his hiding place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, and the earth will reveal her bloodshed and will no longer cover her slain. Those verses, those words, speak boldly, I think, to what we understand to be the theology or the doctrine of the rapture uh, of the church. Now, I would tell you that the word rapture is to be found nowhere in Scripture. It is not, and I have people who deny the rapture uh, and say that's not going to happen. They have more of a uh, uh, amillennial viewpoint of life uh, that they're you know that 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 it doesn't exist. You know, well, it's kind of like saying, well, you won't find the word Trinity in the Bible, so therefore Trinity isn't in the Bible. Well, you might not find the word Trinity, that's our word, but you certainly will find uh, the principle, the doctrine, and the theology of the Trinity all the way through the Bible from the first couple of verses all the way to the end. And you will also find the uh, doctrine of the rapture uh, in a number of places throughout Scripture, most prominently, of course, is in Paul's writing uh, and in the Revelation, uh, and in Jesus' words on uh, the, the, the Olivet Discourse. But here, you know, in, in, in the, the couch of Isaiah's prophecy, we find a beautiful parallel passage as it deals with the resurrection and deals with, I believe, the rapture. 
uh, so many people say, well, you can't find the resurrection there in the Old Testament. Well, it pretty much tells us that uh, the resurrection is taught in the Old Testament. Sorry, all you Sadducees, formerly who used to be out there, but at any rate, I do wax myself down little alleys and roadways. Uh, I read the the verses that I shared with you. The first thing that, that, that shot into my mind uh, here a couple of weeks ago when I began that is how this passage seems to fit perfectly with those other verses that we find in Scripture that relate to the parousia, the, the, the appearing, and the gathering together, and the taking out of that which restrains evil, which we understand to be the church empowered by the Holy Spirit. Many Bible commentaries uh, don't interpret Isaiah 26 this way. Neither do Orthodox Jews. They, uh, they relate this to Israel and not to the rapture. They relate it to another incident entirely. In, in fact, I, I don't see many rapture-believing Christians that uh, run here uh, to support their position either. Um, but I think you can. And reason number one that I gave you two weeks ago, we didn't get any further than this, is your dead will live and their corpses will rise. Well, that certainly, to me, speaks of the resurrection. And we understand that the resurrection comes at the time of the rapture. Uh, Dr. Harry Mo Henry Morrison is a great defender of this truth, uh, as well as there are some other very good, solid scholars. But here in the Old Testament, there's assurance of a bodily resurrection of the believing dead, an assurance being made possible because God himself in Christ would conquer death itself. Isaiah, look, look at verse 19. Your dead will live. I don't know how else you're going to uh, uh, interpret that. I know. Oh, you mean old dead Israel going to get up and live again? Well, I don't think that is it. Their corpses will rise. You who lie in the dust, awake and shout for joy. Oh, folks, he, he's talking about the body of those who have fallen asleep, those who are dead, as Paul does in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. After prayer, we'll go and pick this up again. But I do want us to take a moment, as is our custom, to take a look at mission. We've been looking at the White family in Guatemala. And this will be the last in that series of videos that we've been looking at. Picked it up out of a video, out of a VBS packet, uh, you know, that I found online from a few years ago. And I thought, oh, this is so great. It, it is so neat. We need to see it. So here you go. Here's the last of our installments. Did you know that there are 37 volcanoes in Guatemala? Three of them are currently active. You can see three of them from our hometown of Antigua. We love to go hike them. When you get to the top, it looks like you are on the moon. And if you are lucky, you can even toast marshmallows over the hot rocks. A lot of the volcanoes in Guatemala are not active. They are what experts call dormant or in a deep sleep. They are not active but could be again one day. It reminds us of our Bible story for today. Jesus died and rose again. He fulfilled God's plan to save us. The whole point of our family being here in Guatemala is to tell others about Jesus, that Jesus is the Redeemer and that He wants to have a relationship with them. These are coffee beans. Guatemala's coffee is shipped all around the world and is very popular. So it makes sense that Antigua is filled with coffee shops. Guatemalans like their coffee very sweet. Meeting a friend for a cup of coffee is a great way to build a friendship. And if I'm friends with someone, I definitely want to tell them who Jesus is and how he died and rose again. It's the most loving thing I can do. Like a lot of countries in Central America, Guatemala was hit hard by the COVID pandemic. 
a lot of people are hurting. White flags became a common sight here. If you saw someone flying a white flag, that meant they needed food. So, we keep food bags in our car and give them out to those in need as we travel around. Showing the love of Jesus is the best way to build relationships with people. And it's what Jesus told us to do, love our neighbor. I get to kind of like that. That's kind of neat. You know, when you see a white flag, that meant that these people need food. And, uh, you know, they carry bags of food around to, to give them. One of the things that impressed me all the way through this pandemic thing is I've looked at video after video and uh, wrote, read stories of missionaries all around the world is how our missionaries really step forward during uh, these lockdowns in various countries that uh, uh, really had much more stringent you know, as stringent as ours were, uh, their, you know, theirs were sometimes to the point of being arrested if you didn't, you know, follow them. And uh, they didn't have some of the, uh, of the hospitals, the, the, you know, the services that, that, that we have here. But our people were on the forefront. And our mission money went out there to feed the hungry and they would, they would stock up on anything they could get in food and they would make sure that the food went out. Just about every one of these videos that I've seen that have come out during the pandemic, and you will excuse me while I turn all of this off, during the pandemic uh, had food. You know, they were, were getting food out to the people in the churches who were then getting food out into their communities. But, you know, I know people here in the States that do some of the same thing. They get, they get uh, gift coupons for food. They see somebody who's in need, you know, instead of giving them money, they give them food coupons. Uh, you know, I, I'm not much one to, uh, uh, to acquiesce to panhandlers in this. Uh, it's different when I'm in another country because the needs are vastly, vastly different. But these are missionaries that are out there on the forefront. I like the idea of, uh, you know, taking a friend to coffee. I do that occasionally. Uh, it's a good thing I like coffee because I, I do the sit and have a cup of coffee, let's visit, you know, a, a, a whole lot. And uh, it's a great way to uh, get to know people and visit with them and open up and have conversations about Jesus with them. Uh, it's a joy to do that. And I love you all. Uh, Terry says, I love these videos of whole families. Well, Terry, I'll try and find as many as I can because I do too. I like to see whole families involved. I like us to see that it's not just uh, uh, just a couple on the mission field or a missionary there. It's a missionary family. In some areas, those missionary families have to be broken up for school purposes, and the children go away to a boarding school, and they're not you know, there or involved during the school time of the year, but at other times of the year. Other times, those families can stay together, be home taught, or they can go to school locally or whatever. So uh, it is good when we can see whole missionary families that are out there together. Well, I want us to pray before we go to our Bible study and uh, just ask God to open a heart of mine to know him, pray for our missions. By the way, uh, in, about, uh, in about a week, any money that comes in for the Christmas uh, outreach uh, in the Philippines at uh, uh, Grace Baptist Church in Davu City, uh, I told Pastor Luciano that any any funds and funds that came in, we would send them out uh, the end of October, so they'd have time to use that money to buy food and put those baskets together. Uh, later on in November, they'll be giving those out as a massive outreach in their area to reach families with the gospel by giving out food baskets in a very impoverished area, an area where people need the food. You have an opportunity to be a part of that. Just like, you know, uh, we have Operation Christmas Child, you know, going now. Folks, I, you know, I don't believe we can be too generous and are too involved in the various mission opportunities that we have. I know this is a busy year and I and busy time of year. Uh, but you take those shoe boxes and you fill those shoe boxes. You pray over those shoe boxes. You bring them to church. We'll pray over them. And then they're going to be going out. We have about a month. Uh, before we have our big in-gathering uh, all around this area. So Terry shared with you wonderfully on Sunday. You have that opportunity. Grab your boxes. Get your boxes filled. 
In the meantime, though, be praying for this outreach in Davu City by Grace Baptist Church. And are you, does God want you to be a part of that? If he does, then I just simply want you to, to, to put that in an envelope, mark it for the Philippines, because uh, by the end of next week, I want to be able to send whatever funds come in before the end of the month uh, to them so that they can get everything taken care of. To this point, I think we have two or $300 uh, that has been raised uh, and, and has come in. So if there's any more, yo, please, let's get that in and let's get that to them, all right? So that's another thing that you can pray for. Pray for Operation Christmas Child. We've been involved in this for a long time, and God has definitely, most certainly blessed. And if you're out there and you don't live in this area, and you want to participate, find a local church there that's a participating. If you can't, uh, and, 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 and you don't, you can go online and you can participate by building a shoebox online, and then let us know, and I'll let Terry know, and we can keep that record out there. But the main thing is, let's do that. Last year, they passed their 200 millionth shoebox. Can you imagine that? 200 million plus shoeboxes have gone out. And we've been a part of that over the years. We were a part this year. So let's all saddle up together, link up together. Let's get that job done. But at the same time, we're going to give, you know, to, to, to help with uh, this mission activity in the Philippines. It's uh, our privilege to do so. And I encourage you to pray and see what God would have you do. Uh, I'm not asking you to do anything except seek God and do what God wants you to do. That's all I ever ask. That's all I ask ever ask in anything. It'd be the same way with the shoeboxes. What does God want you to do? And then obey. Just simply obey. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for our opportunities that we have to come together, to pray together, to share together, to share our joys and our experiences and our love one with the other. I know, Lord, that... Uh, it takes a little effort to type in a message and, and, and post it out there, uh, to be read by others or read by me so others hear, to put those prayer requests out there like, like Terry has for her sister. God, it may take a couple of seconds to type that message out, but we've got it, and it's out there to go out. Sharing what, what Michaela's been going through. I, I, well, Lord, I pray for Terry's sister, these tumors that she's getting in her bladder. Lord, that you'll, you you can stop that, but Lord, as she goes to have them removed, we just pray that everything goes smoothly and well. We pray, Lord, now that uh, uh, Michaela has come through her surgery, moving her gallbladder, the baby's come through fine. They still have to get their strength. Lord, Michaela has lost so much weight, and she is so frail right now. Lord, let her hold nourishment in her body. Let it day by day build up. Let her strength come back. Care for that baby. Nurture that baby. Keep that baby strong and safe. I know it's been very difficult, Lord. But God, your hand is upon all of them. Your hand's on Sean and, and, and Riley. But Lord, you have you have put your arms around this mama and this, uh, uh, this baby that is yet uh, to be born. We ask you to protect them and, and to guard them and to shield them. Father, I thank you for Terry and and Lord, her leadership in Operation Christmas Child, and I know, Lord, it's not the easiest thing because she's got to scoot around with that leg scooter and it puts strain on the shoulder, but God, she's out there and doing the work you gave her to do, and I thank you for that. Now, Lord, you know uh, you know the boxes you have, 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 have determined that, that you desire this church to fill and to give out, that, that children and families and communities can be reached with the gospel all over the world. Father, I pray that we will listen to you, that we'll heed your word, and that we'll obey you. And God, if you would have any to join with, with Pastor uh, uh, <coughs> Luciano, join with me, Lord, in helping with his food distribution and the reaching into these areas and the starting of preaching points and reaching into families with food there in, 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 on Mindanao and around Davo City, I just pray, Lord, that you will show us you impress upon our heart what we are to do and that we will just simply again obey you. God, it pleases you. You, you don't care about sacrifice and, and burnt offerings. 
but it's the obedient heart you look toward. God, I thank you. I thank you that we have the opportunity to practice obedience by praying, listening, hearing, and responding to you. Now, Lord, as we come to your word tonight, I pray that you'll open up our heart and our understanding to Scripture that perhaps, Lord, we've not looked at before to understand it. And we ask that you just open it up like a beautiful flower for us to to, to just enjoy and understand, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, we're going to launch in with the time that we have left. Oh, my goodness. And, and look at number two. Number two is, the number second reason is this. Uh, Father, mold our hearts to be like yours. Amen. Uh, I, oh, by the way, I was uh, reading and studying and, and looking at a coming up lesson in Mark, and it's the widow with the two mites, and it just thrilled me as I'm looking at some of that and, and looking at the research and going back over some of that. Oh, there's such great lessons in that. Stacy, oh, what a blessing to have you out here this evening. God bless you, dear girl. We love you, and I am so glad that you came through your surgery fine. Uh, we love you, kiddo. All right. Look at reason two. Reason two says, come, my people. Enter into your rooms and close your doors behind you. Oh, does that remind you of anything? Well, it reminds me of John 14, verses 2 and 3. In my Father's house are many dwelling places, many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So what is and where are these chambers that Isaiah is talking about that allow us to hide from what he talks about? You're very welcome, my dear. What he's talking about, the coming indignation. And what does that mean? Could the place that Christ is preparing for his believers, where there are many dwelling places, contain those chambers where we are to abide until the end of the tribulation? Well, Seems to make sense. After all, in the very next verse, we are told that Christ's purpose for preparing that place for us is so that he can come again and receive us to himself. Which is precisely, is that not what the rapture is about? Drawing us to himself and there to be with the Lord? Always? So... As I look at this, the second reason why this passage refers to me to the rapture is because uh, the rooms of Isaiah 26.20 seem to coincide with the heavenly place which Christ is preparing for those who love him, that he will one day come back and receive to himself. As First Thessalonians says. But there's a third reason. He says, and this is what caps it for me. Uh, besides the resurrection part, but this, this part that attaches itself to reason two. Reason three, it says, hide a little while until indignation runs its course. Now, see, I, I can't see like my, my conservative uh, Jewish friends do that this relates uh, to Israel at different times where uh, God is judging Israel and they've been about, because they weren't able to hide from the indignation. They were part of it. They were being disciplined by God. But listen to what he says. Hide a little while while the indignation runs its course. Now, looking at Dr. Henry Morris's, uh, in his commentary, he says the indignation that he speaks of is the Great Tribulation. During the height of which, uh, the believing Israelites will be preserved supernaturally by God in the wilderness. And of course, remember, in, in, in context, Isaiah is speaking to the Jewish people. So could it be that what he's talking about is I've got a place to hide you, to keep you protected? Well, it seems like that would be reasonable. In light of Revelation 12, verses 13 through 16, he says, And when the dragon saw that he was thrown down to earth, he persecuted the woman, the woman being Israel, who gave birth to the male child. All right? But the two wings of the great eagle was given to the woman so that she could fly into the wilderness to her place where she was nourished for a time and times and half time. 
equaling two and a half years from the presence of the serpent. Or, you know, so the serpent poured out water like a river out of his mouth after the woman so that he might cause her to be swept away with a flood. But the earth helped the woman and the earth opened up its mouth and drank up the river which the dragon had poured out of his mouth. Now certainly there's great symbolism in here. But the woman in this passage represents the remnant of believers in Israel. Those that who are not dead and, and are following Christ. And at this time, that if, and they've turned to Messiah. Not all ethnic Israel, but the believing remnant of Israel. Most of them, I believe. In the secondary application, this promise also applies to all saints who are caught up to be with Christ prior to the outset of the tribulation period. And Pastor Luciano, hello from Tigard and Portland to the Philippines. It's good to see you, my brother. I'm looking forward to a week from this Saturday. Y'all pray for me. I'm going to have the privilege of, of sharing with this precious group of people a week from this Saturday. Uh, so be much, much in prayer if you would. Uh, I'll be sharing on the 28th. My brother, it's good to see you tonight. The central purpose of the rapture is to exclude Christ's people from the wrath that is to come. For we are not born or destined for wrath, Scripture says, but for salvation. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 9 through 10, it says, move, there we go. For God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another, just as you also are doing. Consequently, it, it, it follows that Isaiah 26 and verse 21 is, is, is in perfect support of that text for the rapture since its main point is that God wants his people spared from the wrath to come. Spared, if you will, from the, uh, 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 the indignation until it runs its course. Now, lastly, there's a fourth reason. He says the Lord is about to come from his place and punish the inhabitants of the earth. Tell me, at the end of the Great Tribulation, what is going to happen? You all know? Have you read far enough in the book to know? Since the Great Tribulation's purpose is to punish the inhabitants of the earth, which it is, is it not? It's not to punish the tribulation saints. It's not to punish uh, uh, the world. In fact, he's coming to he's coming to bring judgment to the nations of the world. Right? Isn't that what Revelation nineteen is all about? To punish the nations of the earth for their iniquity of rejecting God and His Christ. It's not understand, hard to understand why Isaiah 12, 26, 21 parallels these verses which describes the intent of the tribulation period. Psalm 2 has been considered by all Jewish and, and non-Jewish scholars as being a messianic psalm, and it puts things well into perspective when you look at it. Psalm 2, verses 1 through 6, go with me if you will. Why are the nations in an uproar and the people devising vain things? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers take counsel against the Lord and against his anointed, the Messiah, saying, let us tear their feathers apart and cast away their cords from us. He who says to the heavens laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. Then he will speak to them in anger and terrify them in fury, saying, But as for me, I have installed my king upon Zion, my holy hill. Anybody want to tell me when his king will set upon Mount Zion and be installed as his king 
on that holy mountain? Literally, not figuratively, at the end of the tribulation. When the king of all kings and the lord of all lords comes back, why do not riding on that white charger and having written on him the word of the Lord, the word going forth from his mouth and slaying the nations, and he will stand up his kingdom and he will rule. The God King, or the King God is installed upon his holy mountain, is the one to rescue us from the wrath to come that will descend upon the whole earth. As Paul is commending the Thessalonian believers, he, he also exalts the one who rescues us. In 1 Thessalonians 1, starting in verse 10, well, actually verse 8 and down to verse 10, he says, The word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Acacia, but also in every place your faith toward God has grown forth, so that we have no need for anything. For they themselves report about us uh, what kind of reception we had from you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living God and what? To wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, that is Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath to come. Now my brothers, my sisters, who believe that the church, that you and I, that we believers will go through the rapture, have a hard time to be explaining exactly what Paul is saying to the church in Thessalonica. There are others that I know that say that, uh, that all of this transpired and took place in AD 70 and on forward that uh, Christ returned at that point and that all resurrection is a spiritual resurrection hereafter. And I'm not going to go into all of that. My friends, it's hard to get around such verses as this and hold those belief systems. Jesus Christ is the one that rescues us from the wrath to come. Why? Because we are not destined for wrath, but for salvation. And that believing remnant that exists during the tribulation, those tribulation saints that God has gathered unto himself, he will at that time, though under great persecution, still guard and shield them. Therefore, the fourth reason why this passage to me refers to the rapture is because the punishment that comes is brought by God, and it's a punishment meant for all people, all inhabitants of the earth, who have not obeyed the gospel. What is this time when God's people will be carried away, securely hidden from a time of great indignation that the Lord is going to bring upon the whole of the earth? It can refer to the deliverance of the Jewish people from the fury of the Antichrist that's described in Revelation 12. Certainly. And I think it does. But I also believe it speaks to the refuge and safety and security of the people of God when they are caught up together with the Lord in the air and escape the horrific indication of the Lord that he pours out upon the whole world during the great tribulation which will immediately proceed the second coming of Christ. When we look at it this way, this is a powerful passage supporting the teaching of this, this pre-tribulation rapture which says that Jesus Christ will remove his people from this earth before the time of great tribulation that comes upon the earth immediately before his ultimate return. You might want to circle that, study it, look at it. Check me out. Search out the scriptures and see if they might be so. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for our time together, for the joy that we have of coming to your word. It is such a joy for me, Lord, whenever I have the opportunity to open the word and teach, to preach. I don't know why you have given me such a privilege, Lord, but 
but it has been mine for 48 years, and I am so thrilled at that. Thank you, Almighty God. And Lord, I pray for our, our fellowship, my brethren, <laughs> all over this world, Lord. My dear sweet brother, Pastor Luciano and his church there in, 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 in Davu City, God, thank you for them. Give them a rich open door to the gospel all around them. As, as for us, Lord, too, open up many doors to the gospel for us as well that we may, may see many more believers come into the kingdom by the grace and the mercy and the calling of God. To you be praise, honor, glory. All majesty belongs to our King. Bless us as we find our rest this evening. And Lord, restore our bodies for what you have for us tomorrow. Thank you, Lord. And we just pray again, lifting up Terry's sister, lifting up our sweet granddaughter, Michaela. Thanking you for Julia, and Lord, as all preparation is made for Buddy's funeral. Thank you for our mission effort on opportunity, the privilege we have to fill shoe boxes and join with other churches, Lord, and sending these boxes across the world through, through Good Samaritan or Samaritan's Purse. And thank you for our privilege, our privilege, Lord, to link hands and join hands with our brothers across the, the ocean, Lord, to, in their effort to reach their community and give out food. Might we be found faithful, Lord, as we join with Pastor Luciano and Grace Baptist. To you be praised, Father, and thanksgiving. I want to thank you for the rice and the meat that you have allowed us to help provide to the orphanage there in India. God, Thank you for blessing us this way with these opportunities. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I'm going to let you go tonight. You all get yourself some rest and have a good evening, and let's hit it tomorrow. I'll see you at 9 in the morning as we come together. God bless. Be in prayer for you. Have a great, great evening.